Hi everybody, my name is Marta Mama. I'm your basic queer bitch. And since I am from Spain, but I grew up in the US, I think I have kind of a unique perspective on Drag Race España. So let me tell you everything you didn't get because of the translation. So first of all, Ugacio just left and everyone except for the Vima, everyone is very sad. And I want to talk about Ugacio's message in the mirror. So what he said was, Si no me entendéis irse, or something like that. It was a reference to a very famous catchphrase that Lola Flores, this like folk flamenco singer, had because um, when her daughter got married, everyone showed up in the church. They got very overwhelmed and they couldn't like have the ceremony. So uh, there were so many people and Lola Flores knew that everyone that was there was there because they loved her. So she like stood up in front of everybody and she said, si me quere, irse. And that's a very famous catchphrase. It means, if you love me, leave. <laughs> so that's what Ugacio wrote in his mirror message. So a lot of people didn't understand that, but that's very, very recognizable in Spain. Everyone knows who Lola Flores is, and it's a very important figure for a lot of like queer performers here. Uh, then we have the puppets. And I think you're gonna get like basically all the references, but it was very funny. They didn't translate it like that, but they talk about Mari Carmen. And Mari Carmen is one of the two important ventriloquists that we had here, like in the 80s, 90s. I remember her in the 90s. I'm from the 80s. There were two very famous ventriloquists, and was one was Mari Carmen y sus muñecos, Mari Carmen and her puppets, and the other one was José Luis Moreno. And from the two of them, they chose Mari Carmen. And I think that's a very good idea, because this week... We had in the news that the other one, Jose Luis Moreno, I think is in prison right now for doing like not very nice things with money and the mob and like, yeah. <laughs> so they chose Mari Carmen, that's a good one. Uh, the puppet challenge, I think wasn't the funniest. I think it's very funny how Poopy doesn't really have to do anything. She's so quick, so, so witty that before she even starts talking, everyone is cracking up. And that's like her type of personality. And that's something that you either have or you don't. And she has it. So everyone is cracking up even more before she says anything. I think she did a very good job. The one who won was Carmen Farala, though. She was very funny, too. Carmen Farala is from Andalucía. She's from Sevilla. And that would be the place in Spain where traditionally we know the people from Andalusia to be the most like quick witted, uh, the funny ones, the ones that are like traditionally like always telling jokes, all like the funny people in Spain, all the comedians, like most of them are from Andalusia. Of course, Andalusia, like the south of Spain, is a lot more than that. But it's like part of the culture here in Andalusia, having like that wittiness, that angel that we say here, the angel they call it. I think that's gorgeous how they call it. So Carmen won. And as the winner, her prize was to choose the order of the appearances in the roast. So this week is the roast and they have like a guest that's going to help them with their speech. And that's Bryce Efe. Bryce Efe is the actor that plays Paquita Salas. Paquita Salas is a TV show that is made by the Javis. So now we have a challenge for La Veneno, which is made by Los Javis. Last week we had Física o Química, where the Javis appeared. We have Paquita Salas, which is also Los Javis. All, like Los Javis are present in a lot of the episodes, not only them themselves as guest judges, but everything that goes on, all the challenges, like are turning around what Los Javis have done in their career. 
that's funny because I think who was it? Um, someone in the roast was mentioning this, like, oh, here we have Los Javis. What a surprise! Oh, you're here too, and here and here and in the gay sauna and everywhere. And that's basically why I think that like they are using a little bit too much Los Javis for everything and their career and everything they did for absolutely all the challenges. There are a lot of other things in queer culture in Spain that they could be using, but since uh, the channel, the production is very like attached to Los Javis, they're going to use everything that that production and Los, Los Javis have done previously. So they are using all these things like Paquita Salas, like La Veneno. So some of the funny puns that they had that you may not get is that uh, they call Los Javis Rosana after losing weight, this is Rosana, and Chelo Garcia Cortez, which is a commentator in some like gossip uh, programs that we have here. And then they take, they go to Ana Locking and Susi Caramelo. I know nothing about Susi Caramelo, I'm very sorry. I'm like very stupid with a lot of things. I, I know she's like a TV host or something like that, I guess but I've never seen her on TV. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't give you like more references about her, but they take Ana Locking and Susi Caramelo and Killer Queen says, aren't you from like the Lore Lore Maku Maku? That's like a song from a TV show. And I'm gonna leave the link down below, but it's a song that two characters that are kind of like Chonis, we've already talked about Chonis, has in that TV show and it became very famous and very like viral. So Carmen is doing an impression of the impression that Paco León does of Raquel Revuelta. We had this very famous like Spanish model that then became a TV host in a TV show about movies. I'm gonna try to leave a video from both Raquel Revuelta and Paco León doing an impression of Raquel Revuelta, so you can just like get what we're talking about. And yeah, she was successful. Honestly, I liked Poopy very much. I know she got like harsh critiques and I don't really understand why, but okay. <laughs> it's not me the one who's judging, but yeah, I think uh, Poopy did a good job. Carmen did a good job. Killer did a good job. Dovima got stuck with her hair, but her concept, her idea was good. And Sagittaria was having the hardest time. I was watching it in my house and I only wanted to like hug her between my huge breasts. The runway this week is the night of a thousand Rosalias. I think you probably know who Rosalia is. She's a Spanish singer and she's becoming like very famous internationally. I don't really honestly listen to Rosalia that much. I don't know if it's a generational thing, but I know she's like uh, being very successful in the music industry right now. What I do listen to is this cover that she did of Me Quedo Contigo from the like funk flamenco group that we had here in the 80s called Los Chichos. She did this live performance with a cover of this song and it's one of the most amazing songs I've ever heard and I listen to the song all the time it's the only like Rosalia thing that I really want everyone to listen because I think your idea of Rosalia may change forever so please when you finish this review go to the description of the video find that link and watch it and I'm just going to ask you that if if you listen to that song, if you watch that video and you tear up, come back and comment. Okay, I'm just like, just saying. And in the night of a thousand Rosalias, first off, we have Dobi Manurmi. Dobi Manurmi was wearing uh, what Rosalia wore for her performance in the MTV Awards. Not the red carpet look, but the one she, she, she used for the performance. And yeah, she like very successful. It looked basically the same. She wasn't wearing the platform boots that Rosalia usually wears, but it's like more elevated, whatever. Uh, then we have Poopy Poison. 
Poopy Poison got the, like had the genius idea of wearing a tracksuit and a messy bun, and then she had a lot of like a hatchet, a knife, guns, and everything like pointing at her. That's from the music video of Pienso en tu mira. I'm going to link, link that down below as well. And I think that's genius because it's very recognizable. It's very different. And I think that Poopy always thinks in the campiness and is more about like the idea than the execution. And I think this idea was absolutely great. Then we have Carmen Farala. Carmen Farala, we know that made this outfit in like a couple hours because she was going to wear the same outfit that Dovima was wearing. So since she didn't want to wear the same thing, she just like got the sewing machine and made a whole outfit in a couple hours. And I sew myself and I think that is very impressive. Even, even if you have like everything already mapped out and cut, that is not that easy to do in like 24 hours. That fabric is not easy to work with. So I'm very impressed with what she did. Killer Queen had like this red outfit and a white snake on her face. And she was referencing a photo shoot that Rosalia did for the Vogue magazine. And uh, she looked beautiful. And Sagittaria was referencing this other look that Rosalia usually like wears either this or a similar one for her live shows. And the gag this episode is that the bottom two are Dovima and Sagittaria and Dovima doesn't lip sync. You know, I don't really care about who leaves. I don't care about the competition aspect. I care about like the artistic decisions that they make and why they make it. So I think the decision of not doing the lip sync is being perceived now as if Dovima is giving away her spot to Sagittaria. When to be honest, Sagittaria just gave us one of the most amazing, <laughs> like basically the one amazing lip sync that we've had this season. The lip syncs in Drag Race España are the only thing that aren't gagging us. And Sagittaria just like lip synced. And I'm very happy to see her that because that was like the only thing we hadn't seen from her and I knew she had it. I think she did a very smart thing. Honestly, if I ever competed in a TV show like that, I would have probably done the same thing because we don't really know what's going on behind the scenes. But Sagittaria won that lip sync fair and square. I don't care what Dovima did. Sagittaria had a great lip sync. And I'm kind of bothered by all the opinions when Inti left that she was like uh, being a brat and not being respectful and all of these things. And now that Dovima chooses to leave and she does like basically a Jenny Lemon, then she is like this hero and this amazing friend and the hugest heart in the world. Like we've seen that Dovima never wants to be in a place where she might feel any type of embarrassment. Every time anyone else is doing anything stupid and having fun, Dovima doesn't want to participate. And I think she wanted to control that narrative and maybe one of the reasons that she didn't want to lip sync was the same one that she didn't want to do like the stupid, the stupid exercise routine that they do at the beginning of the episode or when they did like synchronized swimming, stupid things that they do up at the beginning of the episode. She never takes part in any of these things. Honestly, I called it out from the very beginning of the episode when I saw the Vimas confessionals that she was going to leave this episode, not that she was going to be eliminated. I like sensed that she was going to leave, but that also makes sense because the confessionals are filmed like the next day or the next week or whatever. So she already knew what was going to happen. I would love uh, to hear Dovima talk about what happened behind the scenes, why she was so tired, everything that she was talking about. I think that being an Instagram queen, that's what she called herself in the interview afterwards, being like an Instagram queen, 
she wasn't ready for a lot of like the performance aspects of Drag Race. And she, being an Instagram queen as well, wanted to be very much in control of her image. All that makes a lot of sense. And Dovima is like very scared of feeling embarrassed and she wanted to control her own narrative. She knows, I think, that she has said very harsh things to Ugaceo, even in this episode, and that wasn't justified. And I don't know, I'm talking about like the reality show aspects of it, which I'm not that interested. I just think not doing the lip sync is another artistic decision, and it has to do with how you want to be perceived just like any other decision, like any other artistic decision, when your character is your art. So I, I'm i just like interested in why she did that, what was going on behind the scenes. Uh, and I just want to remind everybody that Sagittaria won this lip sync fair and square, and she would have won it no matter what. I just want to remind everybody that you cannot like be angry at Inti for what she did and then praise Dovima for what she did. That's not very nice of y'all. And I don't care about who wins, who loses, or who leaves the competition or any of that. I, I'm just really interested in why they take, they make the decisions they make. In Killer Queen's critiques, they talk about how difficult this week was for her because being severely bullied she has always played the card of self-deprecating humor because every time she made fun of anyone else, she felt bad. She didn't want to feel that she was doing the same thing that was done to her. And there is a very like cool conversation about like what self-deprecating humor is and about reclaiming words. And I think it's very interesting. So about self-deprecating humors in minorities and people that are in the margins, I'm going to recommend everyone uh, to watch Hannah Gazwitz's Nanette. You have that on Netflix. She's a queer comedian from Tasmania. And she talks about what self-deprecating humor means for marginalized people. The point that Javier Calvo makes is that uh, that's a, a big example of that, of making funny the things that hurt us, is how we use the word maricón in Spain. Uh, the translation for that would be the F word for gay people in the US. I'm not going to say that. But here in Spain, that's a word that has been uh, reclaimed by the community. Uh, the F word in the U.S. hasn't, but that would be like the N word for the black community, or it would be like the word queer even, but maricón is a lot more hurtful. And you're going to see that they call each other maricón all the time, and that's because that's a word that is very commonly used and reclaimed. But I also want to talk about this kid that was... But I also want to talk about what this word means in Spain. We had uh, a little kid, a boy, a gay guy that was murdered a couple days ago by seven guys and they were screaming maricón at him. And having this type of homophobic hate, you have to understand that that word can be reclaimed by the community, but it is not like a safe word for anyone else. They just murdered a kid using that word. A black person calling another black person by the N-word doesn't mean that anyone can use the N-word. And obviously, if seven people kill a black person using the N-word, that's going to be like, you know, so words are powerful and reclaiming the words are powerful. And even if it's not uh, translatable because you don't use the F word 
in that sense, in the US, you don't use the word transvestite or crossdresser the same way that we use it here. The, his, the queer history in Spain makes a lot of sense in itself. So we use those words for a reason, but those words are not safe for anyone else just because those words are reclaimed by a community. And I think I also want to shout out all the queens, the queens that were eliminated and the queens that are still in the competition. They decided not to post their looks on the same night. And instead of that, they posted a message about this homophobic murder that we had in Spain. And it's not only because we don't really want to talk about stupid stuff like looks or a competition or a reality show, but because that's the moment that they have more people look at their social media and they chose that exposure to like give that exposure to the important topics that we have to talk about. Uh, I want really want to thank all the queens because this are the th these are the things that make Drag Race España, in my opinion, one of the best Drag Race editions that we've had. Of course, everything was filmed before this, but I think that all the words that they said about reclaiming the things that hurt us as, as something that we can have fun with, I think all this is very important. So that's today's episode that's the reason why the queens aren't on their social media we have basically like two more episodes uh two more weeks to know who wins drag race espana as you know that i don't really care very much do you want to ask me who i think is going to win i think carmen farala is going to win then that's very obvious but I, if i had to choose I would choose probably Poopy Poison because I love her because she brings what Spanish travestis are, what Spanish queer comedians are, what the performance in a lot of places of Spain has been. And I love that celebration. She's having a very hard time because no matter what she does, a lot of people critique her on social media. So if you have any time before looking at all my links down below, you can go and send your love to Poopy. So yeah, I do think Carmen is gonna win, but you know, I don't care who wins or loses, I admire them all. So that's all for today's episode. It was a little bit shorter because it's like 800 million degrees and my face is melting. Can you believe how gross all this sweat is? It's gross. But well, thank you so much for watching. Please leave a comment. You can follow me on Twitter. You can follow me on Instagram if you want, but it's all like personal stuff of my everyday life. And I'm going to leave my PayPal as well if you want to support me. I would really, really appreciate it. Thank you very much for watching. I love you. Stay queer. Goodbye.